Welcome to today's video, you guys. I'm the Hooded Lid and I don't have a new product. And that's kind of a problem. So in one of my videos last week, I asked if you have any products that you would like me to take a look at to let me know. And nobody said anything. But somebody did ask me if I would do a heat proof makeup, a humidity proof makeup. She said it's very hot where she is and everything's sliding off. And that is something I can do. I live in Los Angeles, it's not incredibly humid here, although it can be, but it gets very hot and I don't have air conditioning and I'm a sweater, not the kind you put on in the fall and winter, but I sweat. I sweat easily, I'm easily provoked to sweat and profusely. So I know what it's like when it feels like your face is melting off. I pulled some goodies out and let's get into it. Start with foundation as always, MAC Face and Body. Give her a good shake. I like to put this on with my fingers. Uh, it has film formers in it, and that's why it's so good for humid weather. And that's also why it's called face and body, because you can put it on your body without worrying about staining your clothes, if you let it set first. Pull a little down the neck. There's not a lot of coverage here. So I'm just checking to see if it's even before it sets up. And the shine is my own. The shine is from my own skincare. This is not a shiny foundation. Okay, so I've evened up my skin tone. Let's just see if we can build it up a teeny, teeny bit in a few areas. Um, and I also can't say that this is incredibly buildable. I think it looks pretty much the same. So put it on, let it go. Now, this is where I usually let my foundation set up and I move to the eyes. I'm going to do my eyes completely with liners. And the liners that really stay put are the Marc Jacobs and the Urban Decay 24-7. These guys don't go anywhere. And you can use these as shadow. So let me pull out some more colors and figure out what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you a little trick that not too many people do. I did it once when I was having like a meltdown, seriously, but I also did my makeup at the same time. Okay, there's a situation in the backyard, you guys. I'll tell you about it as I'm doing this. So I'm doing like a seven, right? I'm not taking that all the way out here because of my hood. So there's a the little seven right there, but I'm really doing an inverted V. So it's going in and out. And there's nothing on my lids. And now I'm kind of feeling out my orbital bone a little bit. Open the eyes. And now I'm gonna get a nice dense brush so here's the situation. I have in the backyard, I have retaining walls because I'm built in a hill. And one of the walls is like two stories high. And on the other side of it is a tree. And apparently, you've probably heard the birds in my videos before. I think there's a nest up there. And the reason I say that is there's some leaves on the ground. And yesterday I looked at these leaves and then I noticed there was a color that didn't match the leaves and I went closer and it was, it was a baby. And I have a dog, so I picked him up and put him, a, you know, in front of the retaining wall or part of the retaining wall is a big planter. So you can have things climbing up the retaining wall and have some, you know, plants. So I put him on the planter so Lucy wouldn't see him. And I could tell when I did so, he wasn't very pleased, and his wings went up, and I could see under his arms, and I don't know if this is normal or not, but it looked very, very red, very fleshy, and I thought, he, he doesn't look like he's a newborn chip, but he looked pretty young, and he probably can't fly yet, and flew out. Now, Mama Bird has figured it out, but birds don't have 
you know, hands. They can't pick up their little baby birds and bring them back to the nest. And I don't know where the nest is. I can't see it, and it's really hard to get to. I'd have to go to my neighbor and see if I could go in his yard. And if it is over the retaining wall, which I think it is, so like if this is the retaining wall and the tree goes over, I mean, he fell down here, so the nest might be unreachable for me. And I was told by my other neighbor that unless you can get the, the um, bird in the nest, there's nothing the mother can do. So, you know, he kept on jumping out of the planter and I kept on putting him back so, you know, Lucy wouldn't think, oh, yeah, let's play with this. And I brought him a little bit of water and I had these crackers that had a lot of seeds in them. It's like an all seed cracker from Trader Joe's. And I thought, okay, let's just, you know, put something out. I don't know that he's eating yet. It might still be that mama is feeding him, but I got to put something out there for this poor animal. And I put out some water. And my neighbor said, he's, he's going to be dead in the morning. This happened to me when my, you know, when her daughter was um, like nine or ten and her daughter was so devastated by it. But he was alive. I checked on him this morning. He was still in the planter. He still doesn't like me. And I refilled his water and kind of moved it closer to him because, again, I just don't know if he understands drink water and eat seeds. Okay, need to even this up a little bit with a little more blending. Anyway, he is still out there, so he's alive and well, which is good. I'm going to mix these two. As far as concealer goes, I cannot think of a concealer that just won't budge. I really can't. So I'm just going to mix these Giorgio Armani's because they're incredibly thin. And at least you have that, you know, at least you're not putting something really cakey on your face and it's just going everywhere. Because I have to mix two colors, I'm going to do that mix on my hand, like so. So this could be it, you guys. Just take out your pencil, put it in place, and it's, it is a bit of a one and done. Just for kicks, just for kicks. Let's have some fun with color. This is the Smashbox Aqua XL, and this also does not move. We'll do a little lining with this. And I think I'm just going to blend that in to make it a little hazy. Just a little something. And I'm going to use this also for tight lining. There. Mascara. Mascara is really, really tough because, well, I'm very particular about my mascara. I like my lashes to look fluttery, and I like it to look like I have a lot more. I don't necessarily want them to look really thick, a little thicker, but more. And I don't necessarily want them to look long because being hooded, I think it can look a little crazy town when you just have these lashes like laying on the hood. So the Kush, as you know, I love in this container. That's not the Kush, this is the Kush. But I bought the big one and it's just different. It just looks different. So I've actually been using, I open that and then I open this and I rub this <laughs> spoolie on that one. But I wanted to share with you this. This is the Hourglass Film Noir. It has been around for years. Nobody talks about it, but it is the first mascara I ever fell in love with, and I'm very loyal to it because it's the first one that has never smudged me under here, and it doesn't flake. And it gives me a nice fluttery look. As fluttery as the Kush? No, the Kush is a little bit better in the flutter department, but I wore this yesterday, and I thought, you know what? Pretty close. Pretty close, even though the brush is completely different. But this one, it's not waterproof, but it just does not get all over my face. This is something that I have talked about a little bit, and I've used it in a video that I haven't posted yet. This is from Danessa Myricks, and it's a multimedia. 
and it's pretty darn bright, but this is not going anywhere. The blush is the first thing generally to fade. If you have that problem, then a product like this, if not this, is a good way to go. I also find that the Buxom, uh, these are infused with primer. I think they're even called primer blush. There's only four or five colors, but that lasts for a good while as well. But if you're a sweater, you might not want to be doing any powders. This powder is very finely milled, and I don't have a problem with it. And I've already had this on my fingers, so I'm going to use this. And I picked it up with my finger, and then I took it off. So, like, pick up and take off, because this is a color. Now, this color can be a little dolly. So, let's go ahead with this and kind of chill it out a little bit. And also, this isn't a bad idea to go on with the cream and then use a powder over. Yeah, way too much color. Okay. Way too much color. Keep, make sure your hands are clean before you do what I'm about to do. Rub them together. So, ooh, they're hot. Now I know I look brighter. That's because I, it's hot out and I just got my hands really hot. This is just going to blend everything in and just give it a minute. Let's go in with some bronzer. Very important to do your makeup before you start to sweat. So I'm not going to be incredibly precious about this. Four lips. If you're going to be doing your makeup really light because you don't want everything to melt all over your face, then the place you want your statement is your lip. You can certainly just do a clear gloss and leave it alone. But if you want color, this is, you know, the place to do a liquid lipstick or a stain. I wouldn't do a lipstick proper, a bullet lipstick. So in the stain department, I have this. I don't even know if they make this anymore, but I don't think stains are very hard to find. And you can get them at the drugstore. And this will just give your lips a little color. And this is the only stain that I have. It's probably not the right color considering the blush I'm wearing. Now, the question is, what are you gonna do about this shiny face? For me, leave it be, because there's nothing more attractive than powder on your face and sweat going through the powder. It reminds me of a project, like a ninth grade project, where you mix, okay, fifth grade project, where you mix together water and flour and you get a paste and to me that's what's happening when you put a lot of powder on your face in the summer and you start to sweat. I think you just have to appreciate the fact and embrace the fact if it is humid out, it's a freaking bug man, if it's humid out you're going to have shine or I am anyway because of where I start because of my sunscreen and everything but you guys this face will stay. I just need to do my brows. This is, I think, really solid for heat-proof, sweat-proof, humidity-proof makeup. The key is the MAC Face and Body to start with a base that's not going to go anywhere. I feel absolutely confident this blush is going to be staying. I feel the eyeliner, on the using the eyeliner as eyeshadow, it's not going anywhere. It will crease because Um, okay, so my camera just stopped, which is the first time this has happened since I bought this camera, but I'm not hooked into my computer today. I'm just going off of this teeny weeny LED screen. It's smaller than my other camera even, so I'm not sure what's going on or what it looks like. I do know I was about to wrap it up, and I am wrapping it up. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope this was helpful to you, and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart, and I'm wishing you... Good health. Mwah.